copyright infringement. I'm your guy, Bless One. Welcome to I Smoke Hip Hop. Please help us support the Groman mo- movement just by subscribing. That's all you have to do. Just subscribe, guys. Please, I'm like a fiend out here for subscriptions. Just subscribe. All you gotta do is become a member of I Smoke Hip Hop Nation. Click here to subscribe button. Push bingo. Now you're subscribed. And also click this bell over here to get all the latest notifications. Thanks, guys. One thing about me, I'ma always go and get it. I'ma always chase the digits. Head first by these binges. Ain't tripping over no bitches. To the sun by these riches. Playing football in them ditches. Had me dreaming about them millions. But ended up with a sentence. False 14, I was a felon. I ain't need much to do the crime, but it still wasn't no telling. Hey, how I kept stepping. Still alive. You guys know Max Kellerman? Really? Do you really know Max? Do you know the story of Max Kellerman? Do you know the trials and tribulations he has gone through? Many of us know the sport analyst through his boxing credentials, his work, his spectacular resume with HBO, and also know him through his work that every day we get to see on a weekly basis on ESPN. And he also stars with one other than Stephen A. Smith on the greatest show that's on right now, First Take. But do you really know the story of one, Max Kellerman? Well, what if I told you Max Kellerman story goes deeper than this? Today, let's talk about the story about Max Kellerman. Max Kellerman, born from a Jewish family, rose to fame in the sports world. Max Kellerman is known through notoriety throughout the media and the sports world. Max Kellerman, the 44-year-old from New York City, New York, the alma mater of Columbia University, father of three kids. Max Kellerman, the widely acclaimed sports analyst who worked with one Marcellus Wiley on ESPN LA 7 a.m. radio at Live Downtown Sports in Los Angeles. Max Kellerman, who also has been with the likes of Michelle Bigley through her stoles on This Is Sports Nation on ESPN. Max also has been through his times on ESPN First Take along with the likes of Stephen A. Smith and the moderator Molly Quorum. Max was actually previously known for his best work on ESPN which was on Friday Night Fights. This is what led him to his fame on HBO that he is still with working now. One of the very few analysts who has a contract with two different networks at the same time. Max first started broadcasting, um, he, he got a lot of experience, but he first started broadcasting as a teenager on a New York City public access television cable TV program on a professional boxing called Max on Boxing. Given the medium, the show was quite simple, but nevertheless caught the attention of the boxing communities, including a young Mike Tyson. In the late 1990s, after graduating from Columbia University with a degree in history, Kellerman was hired as an ESPN analyst on ESPN boxing series Friday Night Fights. This is where he met future radio partner Brian Kenny. In 2002, he also was influenced by shows such as Pardon the Interruption, also became the architect for the original host of ESPN, Around the Horn. While the show was incredibly popular, Max Kellerman had deeper things that people have yet to know what was going on with the man we know today as Mr. Max Keller. Tragedy would struck Max Keller. Tragedy, that of a close personal relationship with his younger brother, Sam Kellerman, one of three other brothers that Max has. I I never got to see you immediately after your brother passed away. Mm. And uh, first of all, my biggest condolences in the world, but how did you, what you was it 2010, something like that? Um, it'll be 11 years. Oh, it's been that no, long? No, no, right. it'll be, uh, yeah, 11 years. So, without it's getting... O, it, it, not too intense. It's 04. 04. Yeah. Wow. I can't so, when you say brother, my mind goes, you know. So how, for other people who've got, who are dealing with an immense tragedy like that, yeah. um, obviously it helps you have two other brothers and you guys could all bond together over this, but still it doesn't change it. How did you go about no, getting... the absence of one family member, for anyone who's lost a family member, particularly uh, the closest to you, First of all, there's the subject of loss, right? Everyone experiences that. But objectively, my brother Sam was also a genius. He's a brilliant guy. Um, um, 
And, and it was so always it, your right hand, right? It was always. I Sam wouldn't say Mac. right hand. I would say that we. No, were, you guys yeah, were always yeah, together always, at the always. hip. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, how do you deal with it? I don't know, man. I, I five years. You know, it's funny. Nothing will erase your memory. You know, like trauma. I have patches in my memory that are gone, and it was just. It was five years before I could function like a regular human being. And then still, you know, it's, it's rough. It's rough. On October 12, 2004, writer Sam Kellerman, little brother, little baby brother, that is, a boxing analyst, Max Kellerman, was killed in a homicide, but his body was not found until October 17. Butler was considered a suspect. He had been friends with Kellerman for 10 years. On October 20, Butler, accompanied by a lawyer, sought treatment for his alleged bipolar disorder. Butler was arrested on the Kellerman sling on October 27. Two days later, he pleaded not guilty to the murder and arson. He was held on $1,025,000 bond. Prosecutors claimed that on March 27, 2006, after Butler pleaded guilty to vanitary manslaughter for arson there were more situations to this they also found and took note that on july 8 2005 a los angeles judge ruled that there was sufficient evidence for butler to stand trial on the charges of murder and arson on march 27 2006 after pleading guilty to volunteer manslaughter and arson the 2004 death of Kellerman. On April 5th, Butler was sentenced to 29 years and four months in prison by Superior Court Judge Michael Pastor. According to deputies, public defender Jack Keenan stated this was the hardest difficult thing that he has ever had to encounter in that type of gruesome of injuries. The suspected motive for the murder of of that Sam Kellerman was that Sam asked Butler to move out of Kellerman's apartment. Butler who was struggling to revive his career and suffering through her. James Butler had a hell of a notoriety. James Butler was an American former light heavyweight boxer, former USBA super middleweight champion. And in early 2001, he had a career record of 25 and 0 with 12 wins coming by way of knockout. He also was nicknamed the Harlem Hammer. That later would nickname would ultimately be his downfall. Hammer. Just remember that, ladies and gentlemen. On November 29, 2001, Butler did the most unthinkable thing that you guys could have known. This right here would make him a star and it had nothing to do with his career, neither the death of Sam Kellerman. This right here would lead on to furthermore questioning the psyche and mentality of one heavyweight boxer, James Butler. James Butler has committed the ultimate sin in boxing and delivered one of the worst thing that's now titled and coined the phrase, worst cheap shot ever. Boxer Richard Grant was sucker punched by James Butler after a fight on national TV. Grant was charged with assault for the worst cheap shot ever in boxing history. Boxing fans were outraged. The incident made boxing news worldwide. Experts said Butler wasn't on the same fitness level as Grant. If only we saw something like this between Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao, maybe it could have saved the sport, as disgusting as it was. Three. That's the same score from Melvina Lathan, 97-93. All for the winner by unanimous decision, Richard the Alien Grant. So Butler's number eight ranking is going to take a hit. Richard Grant in the mild upset, a unanimous decision victory. Oh, look at this. Butler. Whoa! Butler just ran Butler. across the ring. Butler just went over there. Sucker punch. Sucker punch and knocked out Grant. Oh boy, terrible. And, the new, and the new commissioner, Ray Kelly, will do something very, very enforceful here. You want to talk about Zab Judah and his antics losing some money in a suspension? James Butler should never be allowed in the ring again. Absolutely never. That's assault. That is assault. He should be arrested on the spot. He should be arrested right on the spot. That is assault and battery. 
This will be the first test for the new commissioner, Ray Kelly, and I know that he will handle this the right way. What a punk. James Butler. And the police should come in here and arrest him. The fight was over. The competition was over. He should be arrested. That is blatant assault. That is disgraceful. Disgraceful behavior. Handcuff him. Oh, Richard Grant. This incident involving Butler led many people to question his psyche, his mindset. And that was by Detective Elizabeth Ishburn of Los Angeles Police Department. She encountered a lot of reasoning and questioning on the psychic mind of Jane Butler. At 9.45 p.m. on a Sunday in autumn of 2004, Detective Espionon of Los Angeles Police Department entered a small apartment just off Sunset Boulevard. On the floor laid a sport rider beneath a blanket. On his skull were the wounds from a 32 blow by a blunt instrument against the wall leaned a blood spattered hammer. The sports rider car was missing and so was his house guest, professional boxer with bipolar disorder whose nickname was the hammer, that being James Butler. It seemed perhaps the simplest murder case in Detective Espionage's 11 years on the job, unless she happened to be the sort of sloth who wouldn't rest until she scrapped very, very bottom of why. Why was her question the only thing I repeated in her mind? Here was something odd. The victim just weeks earlier had written a story about his suspected murderer. Odder, yet a story about his murderer struggled to control his violent impulses. The detective had only to Google the names of the 29-year-old sports writer, Sam Kellerman, and of the 31-year-old light heavyweight boxer, James Butler, and would up popped Sam's column for FoxSports.com. Sam wrote of having been in the audience three years earlier when the Hammer donated part of his purse that night to families victimized by 9-11 terrorists, lost a unanimous decision on national television to Richard Grant after the worst cheap shot ever. And then as Grant reached to shake hands after the verdict, unloaded a bare sucker punch again that dropped Grant to the canvas, unconscious, his jaw broken and mouth spurting blunt. Sam's Collin described Butler, subsequent diagnosis bipolar and his comeback after going to prison for four months for assault. These are the troubling times of James Butler. He was known to always run into problems dealing with psycho psychos mentals problem. And they always knew one day he was gonna end up hurting people he loved. That's what Sam once quoted saying. Hey, they tried to help you and you flipped up on them for some small thing. I've taken the classic, read the books. I don't know what to do anymore. This is what James Butler once said to Sam. Sam would tell the family and friends he noticed James changing for the worse. James' mindset was not the same anymore. The detective then also noticed when she looked on the Google, she seen somebody else, one Max Kellerman. Max who was a studio analyst at the time for ESPN2 Friday Night Fights. He begged to differ with his network blow by blow. Man, this guy was in total collapse when news broke out. Everybody demanded that Hammer be banned from boxing for life after the cheap shot. So who was not surprised by these level of circumstances that would eventually come and circumvise the death of Sam Kelly? Max was always wary of James Butler. He used to warn Sam of James, but he never told James stay away. That was a loving big brother heart that he had because Max knew that Sam was the kind of man that loved people and seen past skin color, anything like that of that nature. In fact, Max and Sam was quoted being nicknamed Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. That's what brother Jack said. Max once told Sam that this guy is basically going out of control, that being James Butler. Max also had to write a column recommending a one-year suspension of James Butler during his now famous cheap shot towards Grant. But unknown to Max that one day the hammer would launch his ravaged hate towards his own little brother. Max and Sam were two pair of Jewish kids from Fifth Avenue. They were also known that something that a lot of people did not know what they are. And those were rappers. Prior to Max and Sam getting their gigs as analysts in sports world, 
These two love the heavy influence of the hip hop scene, not because of the violence in the music, because of the poverty everywhere in the urban society and how people can come up against oppression. So these two were influenced heavy in the roots of hip hop. They also had their own duo album. Max also had a video for his single, Young Man Rumble. These two were incredibly gifted, but Max would also claim that Sam was the well gifted one. Had it not been for his death, Sam was told by many people he could have had a long career in the rap world. New York to state my cities in a man who I hate, I pity him like a branch to in. Got skills, got stamina, got hands of stone like the champ from Panama. Body drop for body shots, cause I could box, no need for clocks or karate chops. And if you wanna see who the best be, come and test me, come and test me, come and test me. Got stardom, fuck, get stuck from the top to the big ball yard in the South Bluff. My flavor's good, my flavor's good. Max was Moses and Sam was Jesus. That's what their mother, artist Linda Kellerman said. Max always was here to protect his big brothers, I mean his little brothers, and all his brothers total. Ever since the incident that Max remembered that you guys now famously seen, Max scarred lip, as you can now see if you look at any segment of first take, you can see a scar on his lip. While Max and his brother were playing, Max burned and fused the left side of his lips and it required three surgeries. What would have been their mother still thinking if that accident never occurred to her baby boy, Max Kellerman. Max entered first grade. His scarred lips made him an instant target. The boys would taunt him every day. Max would defend himself. One day, Sam came and said somebody was picking on him, and Max told his brother, I'm your keeper, and brothers are keepers forever. Max retaliated against the guy who touched Sam, and Max defended his brother once again. These are once of time memories that Max was sharing, what he long remembered from his little brother, Sam. Like a baby face killer, I step in a box in the mob blocks. They hopping on bad rock as a lyrical cannon cop. Jump start the sparking and stop bars. Raid the lost star straight to the top of hip hop charts. Dynamic duo mob and doing the job and co running got them like Batman and Robin. Painful brain full of wild rearrange, yo. Devilish rhymes, but I'm looking like an angel. Before I came into the game, you couldn't name a rookie entertainer who could rhyme like a Hall of Famer. You got delusions and dope and a dumb plan to battle the one Sam Rumble, young. New York's a state, my city's in. A man who I hate, I pity him like a branch to in. Got skills, got stamina, got hands of stone like the champ from Panama. Bodies drop from body shots, cause I could box. No need for clocks or karate chops. So if you wanna see who the best be, come and test me, come and test me, come and test me. Got stone. wondering how did Sam and Hammer became friends well they had a common language and they also found it Sam and Hammer had found this common language through their love of hip-hop and also began heading down 42nd Street after a training session window shopping hip-hopping the playwright and the pub at Sam's side James became the man he wanted to be James became more curious towards what was going on and more trying to see knowledgeable situation, James became a sensitive guy who planned to spend his days after boxing helping at-risk kids from broken homes. Kids like him who also came from a broken home. He'd watch Sam acts of generosity, giving out meals, and even the shirts off his back to the homeless, and years later directing a play to raise money for the families of the 9-11 victims. And he's also was inspired by Sam Kellerman's work ethics of giving back to people that James donated a part of its $20,000 from a fight purse to Sam's cause. Cams once said to a female friend, man, I hope James never snaps on somebody. That's what he once told a female friend. Man, he's like Mike Tyson. He's kind of scary to other people, but he's not scary to me. He's my best friend. 
This is what Sam always told the people. This man that I knew of as James Butler is not the aggressive people that people think he is. He's a nice, decent human being and he is a friend. Max and James used to share stories along with Sam and they also told Butler that Ruffle House Records, a label of Columbia Records back in the days, offered it to produce a single and a video for Max and Sam's Rumble, a young man Rumble, just another day in Max's world. And they asked Hammer to appear in it. James showed up, grumbled over long hours and a lack of pay, and left before the video shoot was done. This was the first sign that Max noticed that James wasn't well put together mentally. In order to defend Sam once again, Max Kellerman stood up for the hammer on TV and in his ESPN column after that notorious sucker punch, yet he still was very worried of the retaliation that once James Butler always seems to leash on people who do him wrong. Max wouldn't tell his brother to stop reaching out to a troubled soul such as the likes of James Butler. That would be killing the best part of Sam. Instead, Max told him, help him out, and you can solve the paradox between their blood. Their kinship was with the weak and insistence on the strength. They shared one's condescence and knew they couldn't be beaten. Because each of them was two people between Max and Sam, while everyone else was just one. Sam, according to police, was sitting at his computer the next day when the hammer struck. He once told a friend that if a larger man ever attacked him, the man had better be ready to fight to death. Was that why Hammer struck him 31 times? Because he was scared that Sam could retaliate right back as well? Because Sam was not a pushover. Sam also could have handled his own, as once everybody recounted of this lesson of Sam. A $300 postal money order to pay for James' flight back to Florida, sent by his boxing manager, David Berlin, arrived in Sam's mailbox that day. Four days passed, while Max and his brothers wondered with growing alarm, didn't Sam answer our phone calls or emails? Max twice asked his friend Steven Schindler, who has moved to LA, can you pay a visit to Sam's apartment? And both times the blinds were drawn, and Steven knock on the door went unanswered. On the second visit, Steven slipped through a window, froze, then staged the way to make a grimace phone call of his life. Three days later, James Butler called the LAPD from UCLA Medical Center's psychiatric facility where he has gone in Sam's car seeking a support group of manic depression. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this guy was basically crying out for help. He told police he had came home through an incident where he talked to Sam and didn't see him later that day. When he came back, he seen that Sam was dead. He later would recount his story later. Then grief leveled Max. It laid him flat on earth because the brothers open grave, which is later what he would say at the um, funeral for Sam. Somehow, it's the task of joining his brother again, and he had to help out, shovel the dirt. This was the hardest thing that Max had to ever do in his life, ever. Later, after intense, scrutinized media reports and everybody jarjacking towards the once undefeated champion boxer, he finally admitted to bludgeoning Kellerman to death in 2004 with a hammer, then setting a fire in the apartment. Prosecutors presented no motive for the slain and declined to comment before Butler's sentencing. Butler pleaded guilty to voluntary manslaughter and arson, and is to be sentenced April 5, 29 years and 4 months in state prison. Butler, 33, reportedly suffers from bipolar disorder and he was arrested at UCLA Medical Center, where he had sought psychiatric care five days after the October 12th slain. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, Sam Kellerman's body was not recovered until five days later. The two were friends, they were from different worlds, but they bonded through boxing. Kellerman, 29, came from a noted Manhattan family. A freelance sport writer, he was a boxing enthusiast whose brother Max Kellerman was a strong radio personality. Could have this been avoided, could have been stopped. These are the dwelling dark times and past of Max Kellerman. So ladies and gentlemen, when you see Max Kellerman and you see his hip hop theatric he does on stage, it is not fake. And it's not him trying to get a kick out of trying to show he's the monster of hip hop. Love each other.